It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. After the Saturday, eight games are completed. I want to first start with the last game, which was a uh, really thrilling double overtime win for Creighton. Creighton's very fortunate to be going forward to play Tennessee uh, because Dante had a one and one now. He's not a great foul shooter, but he had a one and one. And if he made it, they would have won. Instead, the game went to overtime. They tied it up. Creighton went to overtime, went to double overtime. And Dane Altman coached an absolutely brilliant game. He only had two players that could score. Uh, Kuzinov was amazing. He scored 32 after having 40 in the first game. Dante had 28. They were the only guys who could score for Oregon. Uh, their third player, Shellstead, was hurt. They had nobody else who scored. They only had four players who scored in the game, and one of them was hurt late. The other players weren't even worthy of touching the ball. Uh, and Dan Oman nursed the clock from about eight minutes in. And actually, like I said, if Dante had made a free throw, he would have won the game. Instead, he loses... Uh, they forced the second overtime. And here's where I think Dana Altman, who, like I said, coached a brilliant game. Here's where he made what I thought was a colossal error. And you know what? It happens. Because, as you know, Creighton blew them out in double overtime. His team was out of gas the last five minutes of the game. He was basically playing with two players. Because not... Kuznod and Dante. They scored all the points except for one basket in the second half. They scored between them 60 points in the game. In a game uh, that they wound up, you know, after two overtime scoring 73 points, they scored 60 of them. And all but two in the uh, second half. Now, here's where I thought he messed up. And it would have been a bold move, but it was, the I thought, the right move. And I thought of it at the time. I'm not second-guessing. And a lot of coaches wouldn't do this, and he didn't do it. There were 16 seconds left. The game was tied in overtime. They tied it up with an incredible three. Because not, they are in overtime. They are out on their feet. They are exhausted. They don't have anything left. Uh, Creighton is now double teaming and blitzing those two players with three and sometimes four players because they know no one else can touch the ball. They are making life very difficult for them now. He had a one-on-one situation. It was not yet the double bonus. It was the bonus. They would have been a one-and-one. I would have, with 16 seconds left, I would have gone for the steal, and I would have fouled anybody but Ashworth who's a 90% foul shooter. You would have said, wait a second, tie game, you're going to foul? Yes. Because I'm not going to survive a double overtime. So if I'm playing this possession for overtime to go to the second overtime, now it's even, we're dead even with 16 seconds to play. And in that that overtime, uh, they missed a, Alexander missed a little six-footer. He went down the lane, the ball got tipped, he got it back, and it almost rolled in a six-footer that would have ended the game. I would have, after Kuznod ties the game with 17 seconds left and Oregon calls timeout, I would have fouled. I would have gone for the steal hard, and I would have fouled anybody but Ashworth. And you say, why? Because I'm going to get killed in double overtime anyway. My players are exhausted. My two key players who are carrying me are out on their feet. I can't survive another overtime, and they didn't. 
they didn't survive another overtime. They got outscored 15-2 to two in the other overtime. So I would have then, with about inside the first seven seconds, I would have fouled. I would have gone for the steal, hopefully got a steal. If not, and I think they would have been surprised by me blitzing the pass there. Put them on the line. It's one and one. They make one. I'm coming down and going for a two. They make two. I'm bringing Kuznar down off the screen and going for the win. He's been deadly. He made plenty of threes. He made a clutch three to tie the game up just a minute before. He made six threes in the game. He had scored 72 points in the two games. An all-time pack record. Pack 10, an all-time pack 10, pack 12 record. Breaking the record by Jabbar. I would have played either way. They make none. I'm coming down trying to score. They make one. Okay. They missed the first one. I'm coming down trying to score and win it. They make one. The first and missed the second. I'm coming down and taking the ball to the rack. They make both. I'm coming down and shooting a three. I'm taking my chance to win there. I'm not going to win in double overtime. He didn't do that. He played defense, which was the logical thing to do. But I knew, and I said it at the time, I said, guys, watching the game with my boys, I said, guys, They're not going to survive another overtime. I said, if Creighton comes out and hits a shot, they're going to run away. I said, they're exhausted. They are out on their feet. He started nursing the clock possession by possession with seven minutes left. It was brilliant. They played as good a game as you could possibly play. They played an heroic game. But The second overtime was death to them. Yes, they're going to look back as Florida Atlantic would against Northwestern, where their big man could have iced the game on the foul line. He didn't. Their guy didn't. Now, Dante, who had a great game, didn't ice it. Missed the one-on-one. Then later on, made two free throws on a one-on-one. But I would have played... That end of the first overtime for one final possession, knowing I couldn't survive the second overtime. He didn't do that. Alexander missed the the jumper. They went to the second overtime. Ashworth hit a three. They weren't even able to come out and guard him anymore. They came down, missed the shot. They made another three. They came down, missed the shot, and the parade was on. Give Oregon credit for a brilliant performance. Creighton's very fortunate to be going forward. They're a good team. Oregon, they beat a very good team in Oregon. So today, now the big picture. You had two overtime games. Oakland is going to kick itself all the way home because they had, they trailed the whole game. They had a possession at the end of regulation with a chance to win the game and go home. And instead, they don't get a shot off. They not only didn't get the guy, the ball to Jack Golke, they didn't even get him to touch it, but more than that, and Townsend had an incredible game for them too, but more than that, They didn't get a shot, and they got blitzed. Although they wound up covering with a late three in overtime, they still lost the game. And when you look at today's tally, you had Kansas lose as a four, and then you had Bill Self admit that he's been looking at the next season for a month because of the injuries. Um, But Gonzaga was favored in the game. All eight favorites won today. Six of them covered. The two that didn't cover were Tennessee 
and NC State, which won in overtime. Creighton won in overtime, but wound up covering anyway in overtime, in double overtime. So all eight favorites won. Now, you had a one win, Carolina. You had three twos win. You had two threes win. You had Gonzaga win. And then you had NC State win. So eight teams there. The teams you would look to, the power teams this year, they're all still there. Except if you wanted to count Kentucky, who a lot of people picked for a Final Four. Uh, Carolina's alive, going to the Sweet 16. Arizona's going to the Sweet 16. Iowa State's rolling to the Sweet 16. Illinois killed Duquesne. They're going to the Sweet 16. Tennessee had a tough time. Max Atmos, my guy, played terribly today. Missed the game-tying shot with 25 seconds left. Uh, Tennessee beat Texas by four. Tennessee's going to Sweet 16. And Creighton, a three-seed, going to the Sweet 16. Creighton and Tennessee will match up. Good game. And the others... Iowa State and Illinois will match up. Two versus three. Good game. Very good game. And we'll wait on the other ones as we get ready for tomorrow. Now, eight games tomorrow. I think the dogs will be much liver tomorrow. None of them won today. So do I think one or two of them will win tomorrow? I do. Starts off tomorrow with Colorado against Marquette. Marquette, a a four-and-a-half-point favorite. That game's a 12-10 standalone. Second game is Utah State against against Purdue. Purdue an 11.5-point favorite. In Indianapolis, won't get beat there. Utah State played well in their opening win, but they're not going to beat Purdue in Indianapolis. It's not going to happen. That game's a 240 standalone. Two games in Brooklyn, James Madison and Duke. James Madison was ultra-impressive. They're a 7.5-point favorite against Duke. That is a very live underdog. James Madison's got a chance. James Madison's got a chance to win that game outright. That game's at 515. Clemson and Baylor. Clemson played really well. Baylor's a a four-and-a-half-point favorite. That game's at 610. Alabama, which scored 109 in their first game, is a a five-and-a-half-point favorite against Grand Canyon. That game's at 710. I think Grand Canyon has a real live chance in what should be a terrific Wild game. Probably played in the 80s, maybe even the 90s. Alabama doesn't play defense. Grand Canyon attacks the rim like crazy and is one of the top teams in the country at getting to the foul line. They will not be in any way intimidated. That's going to be a wild game. And Grand Canyon is a very live dog. Northwestern, UConn, Northwestern won a wonderful game. In overtime, yes, Florida Atlantic had a chance to win it. No, in regulation, they missed the free throw. The coach is leaving. leaving. The early rumors where he's going to go to Louisville. Now it looks like he may be going to Michigan. He's got a lot of jobs coming his way. Um, Northwestern played well. They're a good team. They're a well-coached team. They're not beating Utah. A&M against Houston. A&M. Not only played well, and they're rugged. They hit their threes. Uh, don't be surprised. They give. I think Houston will survive, but don't be surprised. A and M gives them a little bit of a tussle tomorrow. I told you Houston would win by the biggest margin early, and they pounded Longwood because they were mad. They got up ten nothing and never looked back. And then Yale, San Diego State, San Diego State is a five and a half point favorite. I would not be surprised at all if Yale won. I would not be surprised tomorrow if Yale won. I would not be surprised tomorrow if Grand Canyon won. I would not be shocked tomorrow if James Madison won. Eight games tomorrow. Right now, you still, you've lost a three and two fours, which is not a lot. You've lost Kentucky. You've lost Kansas. You've lost Auburn. Not a lot. We could have some. We already have a couple. Like Creighton, Tennessee is a real good Sweet 16 game. Illinois, Iowa State is a tremendous Sweet 16 game. We're going to have a bunch more by the end of tomorrow. So I was really pulling for Oakland. They had their chance. 
I was very impressed by what Oregon did. I just don't think they played that end of that first overtime right. Because I think their players were just completely out of gas. But boy, were they gutty. They were really, really gutty. What a, what a performance they put forth in that game. What a terrific performance they put forth. They really did. Now, this week, obviously, we'll have all of basketball starting on Thursday night. Remember, this becomes now a the national event part's gone except for the Final Four. Thursday and Friday is diehard time. And remember, baseball starts Thursday. And in some places, I don't know how hot the weather's going to be, but hey, that's just the way it is. We will have plenty of baseball previews, including uh, baseball over-unders and everything, coming your way on Wednesday. We'll have stuff on Tuesday and Wednesday about the Yankees and the Mets and all the baseball picks and everything else. And we will do all that on Tuesday and Wednesday, and obviously we will then preview what's going on in basketball the rest of the weekend as we head towards uh, putting it on the Final Four, and we get baseball underway come Thursday. So, hey, baseball is upon us. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about and a lot to digest with the Yankees in the midst. The forecast for Thursday is chance of rain in 58 degrees. That wouldn't be bad as long as it doesn't rain for the Mets. Yankees will be on the road. Mets will be home. It's like 58 is the high. Not terrible. You can live with that. But baseball is back. And obviously a lot to digest with both teams, and we'll do that this week. And look at everything else going on in baseball going forward. And yes, we'll see where this Atani thing takes us. Hey, you know, there's a lot of rampant speculation here. And you need to give all the people now involved in the investigation a chance to really dig into this. Because there's a lot there and a lot we don't know. So all I'd say is just don't jump to a lot of conclusions until we see what happens. But there's obviously a story there that could be enormous and will be big just because of who it is. I mean, he's become such an enormous star for this to be front and center now is a not the way exactly baseball wants to start the season, to say the least. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.